everybody hello hello welcome to Rumbi and Sensat and happy Sunday and good evening to everyone hope you guys had a great day and tell me how was the church because it's good to see everyone I'm super excited but I want to say welcome to Rumbi and Sensat and please if you're new here I'm asking you to subscribe to the channel but if you're my regulars I want to say shout out and I thank you so much for sticking around but for those that are new please make sure that you turn on your notification button because whenever I am live or whenever I drop a video, you'll be notified immediately. You don't want to miss some of the goodies that are going to be happening right here. <laughs> a lot is going to happen, but trust me. Mm -mm. Let me just say this. I've always been talking to some of my bodies and say, I don't know why Zanpiv keep on trusting Chris Muchangwa to attend to their interviews. I do not know why, because that man, I don't know what he's smoking or what he drinks, that kicks him so much because that man, he has no respect for himself. Forget about the rest of us or anyone else in the, in the Zanupiev party. Mr. Samuchangwa do not respect himself. He has no regard. You know, one thing that people should know is whenever you are mistreating people, you may think you are, but in reverse, you are literally shedding your own character. So today you are going to have a mouthful trust me a mouthful but anywho before we even get into more so for business for the day i just wanted us to go in and check what's going on on twitter right now twitter trends of course uh, shout out to everybody thank you guys for coming through but don't forget to like the live as we move along and make sure that you comment because i want to hear your own opinions let's have a conversation the core of this channel is really to educate to inform and to reprimand where i can <laughs> <laughs> but I also expect you to reprimand. I've been reprimanded by quite a number of people here. Trust me. They've been saying quite a lot of things. But uh, most importantly, guys, is what we're going to be looking at right now. So let's get to our Twitter trends, please. What's going on on Twitter? <laughs> Trust me. What's up on Twitter? What's going on? Who's trending right now? What's up in Zim? Let's get in and check to see what's happening. Uh <sighs> All right, can I tell you this? And uh, for, 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 for the purpose of, um, you know, um, of love and appreciation, I'm going to read this tweet. But again, saying shout out to uh, Dr. Water Mzembe and to everybody. I'm telling you, ah, man, this tweet is so powerful. So he sent out a tweet. You know, Nelson Chami says trending, right? And you know why it's trending? <laughs> a lot is going on. A lot is going on right now as we speak a lot. So let me read this tweet quickly. This is going to open up the flow of our communication. So he said, no 45-year-old is accomplished as much as Nelson Chamisa since independency. Building an opposition movement a year before an election, after losing part funding, part headquarters and legislators to tortoise on a fence post and rising from the ashes to wrestle one or four seats from a skist year old revolutionary movement seamlessly con conflated with the state and supported by the entire security structure. Equally, no 45 year old in, is being fought by the entire security structure. Equally, no 45 year old is being fought with as much zeal by his own generation for succeeding this much, assisted by the same revolutionary movement, smarting from a disputed election. Asha is a hope, including the my veterans. But perhaps his biggest challenge now is how to protect his victory and gains from his own slot. And it calls for a different kind of response to winning. Intruders and thieves only understand one language, even in the jungle, if you want to steal off offerings from an Eve. Hi, la la! <laughs> Can I be honest, guys? I'm a person who believes in the power of affirmation. Affirmation! Yeah, I believe in the power of affirmation. And this is one of the greatest affirmation I've never heard, actually. And I want to say shout out to Dr. Walter Mozambi. I think my Zimbabwean brothers and sisters, we must learn that my success is your success. Your success is my success. Let's understand that we are one people and we are all important. No one is better than the other. We are super unique, you know, in our areas of gifting, in our areas of strength. And it's okay even in the area of our weaknesses. Because when you are weak, the next part person is strong. It may just be a season, but when we recoup, we become stronger and stronger and stronger. This tweet really, really, I just wish 
Nelson Chamisa can pick it and make sure that he places it on his wall. <laughs> if I was Nelson Chamisa, I would take it and like make sure that I frame it for the rest of my life. Because as we, we all know what's going on right now, people are saying, oh, where to from here, Nelson Chamisa? And I don't blame them. They have expectations like you and me do. We all want to see the direction of the country, right? But trust me, good and bad is working for the good. Right now, as we speak, a lot is happening. A lot is happening, trust me, in the background. People are working tirelessly, trying to knit our nation and knit our destinies together and bring sanity and peace among our brothers and our sisters. A lot is happening in the background. Um, so I'm super, super, super excited that Dr. Wotam Zem had to send such a powerful and a loving tweet like this. You know, you know when you're in, in when you're surrounded, when you're in that moment of um, you know, of of conflict, you need such kind of affirmation because that's what makes you stronger. But here's the thing: being a woman, being a woman, I want to be gracious and extend my love to Sokozile Chamisa. Because I'm telling you, behind every successful man, there's, there comes a woman. And trust me, I can only imagine a woman has to see her, her husband every day coming and said, baby, the day has been hectic. You know, I thank God she, he has such a powerful wife. <laughs> that woman is strong. Chamisa wouldn't be where he is today without such a gorgeous woman. <laughs> Sokozile, uh, she, it, cheers, it's talkers, it's cheers. These are the women that we know they deserve some respect in our society because she's in the background. Pray for your husband, believing in your husband. While people are just saying all manner of nonsense on social media, she believes she's going to tell baby, You're a great man. Keep pushing, keep moving. God is with you. I believe in you. I pray for you. I trust that you can do it. You know, and that's why this man coming out is, is as strong as he can be, as bold as he can be. Trust me, without a successful marriage and a strong wife, no so Chamisa won't be where he is today. I can tell you, when there's turmoil at home, how are you going to be able to lead people and even be seen so boldly? No, you need a strong woman who believes in your calling. So a 45-year-old Nelson Chamisa who's doing such incredible work, facing such a ruthless dictatorship, ah, uh, he deserves security. Sir, you deserve some respect. Every Zimbabwean, instead of bashing, bashing, it's time for us to say, we have your back. We believe in your leadership. We trust in you. Wherever you go, we go. You know, that's the motto here. Wherever Chamisa goes, we go. So <laughs> it's the motto for us who believes in his leadership. So if you are not a Chamisa fan, fair enough. I understand. We respect you. But for me, <laughs> wherever he goes, I go. Like in this season, if he messes up, I'm going to stand and still say, sir, you've crossed the line. But right now, I believe in his leadership and I trust that God will pull him through. All right. So next, Zimbabweans, we are trending as well. What did we do? What did Zimbabweans do to train? <laughs> okay. And the Zimbabweans are not accidentally supporting President Nelson Chamisa. They know his history. Okay. So that tweet actually is accompanying a picture where he was standing there with you know what with um with Tangirai there and other people there. These guys have come a long way. Nelson Chami says not only a politician now, he has been there since then. You know, as a young person learning, growing, little by little. That's what happens. Um, you know, you start somewhere, but when you know you're on your way to somewhere, you're on your way to your destination, right? That's what life is about. And Brian said the ZANU-PF Politburo are the only Zimbabweans with medical aid. Did you hear that? ZANU-PF Politburo are the only ones with medical aid. As a matter of fact, people have been going wild today on Twitter, complaining that our hospital are dilapidated. We are really in a guacamaya. This is not on. This is too much. We need a country that functions. People were on today. I don't know if you guys have seen. I don't know if you guys really have seen um, the video. Uh, for for Gary's sister, who spoke such such really painful words today, and I want you guys to take a listen to her. She spoke very painful words. We all need a Zimbabwe that functions really, not with standing our political affiliations. Please go ahead. Scary time. I don't believe so. If the government can hear us, do something so that another family will not have to gather again. Just one scan could have saved Gary. Just for him to be looked at what was going on in his brain. 
just an ambulance baby could have taken him where he needed to go. I don't know. I asked the hospital machine when they said we have no oxygen in the ambulance. Maybe something I don't know. I don't know, but I know Gary held on for 12 hours and it's not fair. No. This Here, guys. Ooh. So, no oxygen in hospitals, no ambulance in hospitals as we speak. This is not a political issue. This is to say we need a Zimbabwe that functions. That's why I'm saying you and me, we should all start speaking up. We should all start speaking up, notwithstanding the rebutting, the disrespect from the other end of Zampia, for we are going to stand and say, I are brothers and sisters. We need a country that functions. My heart was broken, apparently, for the Zanpief supporter who committed suicide recently. You saw, I think that happens about two days ago. Yeah. And I saw my Shingomira say this guy was buried like a nobody. He used to brutalize opposition parties. And I'm sitting on the other end. I'm saying, but the children for the elites are busy driving cars in, in, in Europe. When they are sick, they have private doctors come to their house. They are driving Lamborghinis, expensive cars. When are we going to value ourselves and say, I love my brother, not your son, PF, I love you, but I need a Zimbabwe that function. I love you, my sister, but we need an economy that functions for everybody to be able to afford a decent meal. When are we going to prioritize ourselves and the growth of our nation? Not with the standing political affiliations, where we get to be so obsessed that I belong to this political party, where we say, no, yes, we love you as a leader, but our country should function. This is heartbreaking that a young boy suffered for 12 consecutive hours fighting for his life, but could not get the immediate continent that he needed on time. Here we are. We have lost a beautiful soul, a father who left a child and he left his lover, his wife. Some people may argue and say, but we're all going to die. No, but some death can be avoided. We have power to make sure God has given us wisdom to have roads for a reason. He gave us wisdom to have hospital for a reason. He gave wisdom to doctors for a reason so that they can be able to save as many lives as possible. But we can't be so reckless to a point where we let people destroy everything. You know, we must, this is why it's very sad in a way that Zanpia have spent so much money in bribing people, you know, bribing people, than spending money in fixing our roads, hospitals, you know, paying people well, make sure that you have an economy that works. Imagine, Honestly, honestly, guys, we could have had our own money long time ago if our fathers were really focusing on things that matter. But unfortunately, they seem to be focusing on other things. But what I'm saying is, my brothers and sisters, let's work together to build the Zimbabwe that we want. Very important for us to do so. But mm -mm, today, all right, let me just tell you, there's been a meeting for the CEOs and I'm gonna I'm going to make sure that I drop the link in the description box because I, I want you guys to go there and make sure that you watch that video some people have had an opportunity to do so but some haven't but I extracted a clip that I want us to talk about right now this was Muchangwa so that was Trevor Trevor Nube and I want to say shout out to Trevor Nube Ibo Mandaza um, Mutambara Vana, Vana Shanakira Guys, they are working so hard to make sure that we have a better Zimbabwe. You know, what we are trying right now is to bring our people together. Unfortunately, <laughs> we have the other side. I don't want to take much of your, you know, I don't want to take a lot away from you. I want you guys to take a listen on, so that you can hear when I talk. Because the kind of people we are dealing with right now, the kind of people we are dealing with. And then they were asking a very simple question. How can we get rid of toxicity in the country? Because you also know that recently, Nelson Chamisa reached out to ED and said, let's have a dialogue. Because our elders in Zimbabwe are saying, we need to learn to resolve our issues within the borders. Because this is not the last time where we're going to have challenges. Imagine living in a home where you're always relying on external um, you know, um, forces. Outsource if cancel, you need to learn, even in your families, be it in your families with sisters, cousins, brothers, learn to communicate respectfully. Not every time you're going to make a because you're always fighting and don't have solutions. It's an embarrassment. It shows immaturity. I've always said to my family, 
if I get married, if you hear me calling you, I can tell you must know something is wrong. I don't need to call you nothing <laughs> because I am well equipped to deal with my own personal issues. I am. Mm, I'd rather go and seek other external counsel if there's, but that's why I'm going to consider counsel before, you know what I mean? Because I am a person who believes in order. So where we are right now in Zimbabwe, we are saying, let's try to resolve our issues within the parameters of our borders. And then so that tomorrow our children understand that there is power in communication. Our parents, these elders, are trying to lead by example. How do they lead by example? By making sure we try to communicate to resolve our issues. But hey, 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 please take a listen. Just take a listen indication of hands anybody who's got a, a question a contribution uh to make so that we include uh more people i've been told that we've got about 15 minutes um whilst we're doing that um Tendai and and nigel i really want us to, to engage with the question how do we lower the political temperature how do we lower the toxicity because um, you, you, we, we do, you don't realize how where we are is not healthy until you realize that uh, toxicity can kill a democracy. And we need to attend to that. I, I know you will not agree, uh, business politician, but toxicity does kill um, uh, a democracy. Uh, are there people that want to engage with the conversation at all? Sure, by raising hands. If not... I know Zimbabwean CEOs can be a bit, uh, no, I'm not going to go there. Let me give, um, okay, you want to answer? Yeah, so let me, how do we detoxify Zimbabwe? Our country is torn in half. Whether you go by our own results or by the official results, the fact of the matter is that the country is torn in half. So this is a perfect scenario where dialogue is called for. We need dialogue. We need inclusiveness. We need tolerance. This dialogue must be inclusive. It must take everyone on board. It must take the church. It must take the trade unions. It must take the farmers. It must take a business. It must take capital on board. But we need dialogue. This dialogue must go beyond the sharing of, of, of cabinet seats. It must address the, the national question. What does it mean to be Zimbabwe? What is the Zimbabwe that we are dreaming of? I dream of a Zimbabwe that is united, that is inclusive, a Zimbabwe that can uh, grow a $200 billion GDP economy. I dream of a Zimbabwe where there is tolerance, where we, where we disarm, where we turn uh, these uh, uh, vicious uh, 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 cycles of exclusion into virtuous circles of inclusion. That's what we need to build. So dialogue is important. Dialogue uh, is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, you know, is a starting point. Number two, let's respect the institutions, the constitution. We've amended it, even the new constitution, we've amended it in over 40 amendments in the last two years. A constitution should be sacred. A constitution should be rules of engagement, respected by all on whatever side of power uh, that you are, you are in. Our, institu our, our institutions are important, the judiciary, the press, uh, all these things are, are, you know, are, are, you know, are important. Election delivery systems that deliver citizens that are empowered we've created in the constitution a fourth arm of the state the anti-corruption commission the human rights commission the gender commission the national peace and reconciliation commission this must have teeth this must have oversight uh, over the state oversight over over government so to uh, parliament so the starting point is dialogue the end point is dialogue and inclusion that's powerful right there but and david trust me the first point the point of departure is dialogue. And the ending point is dialogue. What is the source of communication is paramount. 
we can't run a country without communication. People are always fighting. You know, we are, like, it's so sad. Do I blame Tamon Beki for saying the leadership in Zimbabwe should understand that they are there to save the people? The leadership in Zimbabwe must speak to the electorate. Do you blame them? No. We have, is there something wrong in Zimbabwe that we just can't have a conversation? We can't speak like human beings, like mature people. We can't sit around the table and come out with a solution and hold hands and say, I love you. I love you. We disagreed, but I think you had a point. Except, let me just tell you, there was a time I got exposed to this family, uh, right? Hmm. I won't, you know, I don't mention names, but... So there was a lot of screaming and screaming in communication. Screaming and screaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I was looking and I said, okay, let's sit down. But we're going to go one person at a time. So I said, let's start with the other one. What is the problem? The person said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Less than a minute, she had already submitted what she was trying to say. And I said, okay, thank you. Are you done? Fair enough. Let's go to the other party. Go ahead. And I'll say one, two, three, four things. Again, less than a minute. And I said, is that all? Dad, but both you're right. It's only that you were trying to fight to be heard. Simple. We are, we are, I mean, for me, I'm like, even the sanctions problem that we have, we can come up with a solution. <laughs> we can send delegates, go in then speak to them, change some of the things that we're not doing right and resolve them. Are you telling me that America won't, the sanctions will be removed, some of the debt will be cancelled? But arrogance, arrogance, being adamant, you don't want to change. But changes may not be easy, but sometimes it's necessary. I know change can be painful, but you know, change is inevitable. That's how life is, Bill. We must understand the power of communication, not using the force not abducting beating up killings no let's learn to speak around the table but you will see by the end of this talk who is actually the problem you see and we all know but for the benefit of the, let's give them the benefit of the doubt because this is muchangba tendaibiti chanakira and trevor Ngome. so now we're gonna listen to what chanakira has to say go ahead please How do we lower, uh, Tenda has made his contribution, how do we lower the political temperature, toxicity? Um, Tenda is pushing dialogue strongly, uh, an inclusive kind of uh, dialogue. And, and, and Chris, as you sit there, I want you to uh, reflect on this. Is it possible to build this nation, nation building that is inclusive so that everybody feels uh, involved? Uh, Nigel? You know, Trevor, from an investment perspective, uh, uh, again, I want to emphasize, yes, my little two million may be a small balance sheet, but it's worth a whole lot to me. That having been said, I think as Zimbabweans, because we are competing for international capital, and yes, Minister Mchango, yes, we, we, we compliment you for what you brought. We're not denying that. We were together with milk. <laughs> Isn't that so? Zim Cyber City. Uh, that's another one uh, that I thought you would mention. So we see it. But we're saying how much more could be coming to Zimbabwe? That is the question for me. And from my perspective, my humble perspective, the people that I engage with, the people that could potentially bring money say very distinctly, are your politicians tone deaf? Do they listen to themselves? In other words, you know, the optics don't look good from the outside looking in. They don't. They cannot look good just to those who have access to Minister Chris. And if Minister Chris did a, a sterling job in bringing the investors, we are saying, how much more can we all do as CEOs here to bring counterparts? Tuda kupi ndomuliki yoyo, minister. Tuda kuitoma billionaire. Tukujidacha iru jairu. 
Rugunyepe. Of course. Million I shall quan. Of course. In Rugwe, in Rugwe, I'm a billion. But I'm saying it's mm -hmm. not possible <laughs> under the optics that are seen. And are we tone deaf? Is it impossible for Zimbabweans to sit across the desk and remove this albatross of this dead area around us? We are bankers, Namkomanik. Can we access lines of credit? Hell no. The friends are still there in the banking system. It's too hot in the engine room. Are we together? So I'm saying, yes, what you've done is commendable. But we are asking for more. We are saying, guys, but Moita ma billionaire mega ere ne ma forina aiwa nika ino vakwa nani andi ne muri tawo. Nene ma yoga isu. Nika ino vakwa nani isu ga. Saka isu sa disvenere. What are we saying? And and by the way, by the way, they fought the war, but we are not interested in fighting a war. No, we want to fight no, the, the. We want to the fight poverty. The war, poverty exactly. and economic mm. development and growth. We are talking war now. We are not interested in that. We want to get rich also. To which I'm a billionaires. But but uh, Chris, jokes aside, the point that uh, Nigel is raising for me is hugely important. What you do, we are not denying. But we are we are asking certain questions. Wakaita nani kopi munani muchite that kind of stuff. We wanting we wanting we wanting transparency. So we're not we're we're, we're saying we're not saying it's bad what you've done. But to to uh, Nigel's point. If what you did, all of us here could do, imagine what would happen to this country. Can we also be included? Or better still, what do we do for us to be included? You know, you know before Chris starts speaking, let me just tell you this. One thing that I love is just the wisdom that they're trying to exude. They are so wise, you know, the way that they're expressing their words and the way they're talking to him. There's no bashing, you know, like attacking someone. It's talking like brothers, you know, Chris, you are Chris, you are, you are, I'm, I'm Trevor, and uh, this is, uh, you know, Tendai, and also we have Nigel Chanakira. So we are all brothers. I mean, we grew up together. This is what I've been saying. What is so difficult for us to have a conversation, considering that we are family? We are one. We grew up together, yeah. Before we get to these offices and be politicians, we were eating together. Chikafteh, 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 in one plate, sitting around the thing. Oh, what a beautiful scenery. To my husband, I'm gonna marry. I, I I'm gonna eat. We're gonna eat in the same plate. The two Jesus come. Down there. <laughs> I love to eat with other people. We were eating as a family. There was something about us sitting around and just eating from one plate. So beautiful. That's how we used to be. How did we wake up and turn against each other? How did we wake up and look at our brother or our cousins and see them like an enemy? How did that happen? How did we allow the enemy to wiggle himself into our space and cause confusion? That's what we need to ask each other. I love that. I love this discussion. This is what we are saying now we are having a conversation. Politics aside, that's just a banner. We can throw that because not everyone is going to be buried as a politician. We came into this world without a title. We're going to live without a title. It's something that we can strip our source. There's always an, a, a, a big end. A starting debt and an expiring debt. We must never forget. Let us be conscious of our actions and how we react to the position that God has trusted us in. I love, I love the way they're speaking. No fighting, very calm. But, but, Mr. Mochangwa, Mr. Mochangwa, listen, yeah. This man has got kids. Now, I was said, I told you, and I'm still working on that. I told you I'm going to do a video where I need to address the children of the elites. And I'm going to do it gracefully. Speaking to them like a sister and reminding them that I will talk to you again in the next five, ten years. Because I know you're going to come back with your problems. We will see you and we are going to speak. Because at least we have warned you. Because, you know, it's one thing to be told. It's another thing not to find anyone who can give you counsel. I'm going to do that video for a reason so it can be put on record. And I will remind them and say, ah, 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 I, I want you. These games that you're playing will come back and haunt you. Don't mess up with destiny. Don't mess up with people. God is watching you. 
These are your seeds that you're sowing. And you're going to find, there will be time to reap. Your fathers may not, because they are too old, they may go to heaven soon. But you, we will reap from the sins of your father. The Bible says, and children pay because of the sins of their fathers. Now take a listen to Chris Muchangwa's submission. <sighs> I'm tired for you. Take a listen. I would rather uh, answer the last one. Yeah. What can we do to be included? I've mentioned it. The president has opened the country's resources to the best possible capital in the world today. They are bringing their money into this country because they are the only ones who can provide, one, the capital, two, the technology, three, the markets, and thirdly, the products to satisfy those markets. I keep, I don't want to continue to dwell on Tsingshan. But I told you, when Tsingshan comes and puts a plant of steel in your country, and they are number one in the world, Toyota follows, Mercedes-Benz follows, Nissan follows. This is investment on a world-class scale, where Zimbabwe will position itself to produce powertrains of the new electric vehicles from Zimbabwe. Because the guy who has come here to do steel is the best one. I am trying to impress upon you that these are the investments which open up opportunities to a country to move forward. You are trying to see yourself as a competitor to Tsingshan. Then if you make that mistake, then you will not position yourself accordingly. Because he has already attained that level in the global marketplace. He is giving an opportunity to this country. I will cite a very specific example, which I spent the last six to seven, eight months talking to a particular bank in this country to raise 60 million to build a power station, a power line from Sherwood to Manisa. There are bankers here. There is no more than $60 billion, of, $60 billion in the market of Zimbabwe. They can't supply that money. They say to the company, we want a balance sheet from Shanghai. The guy says, I built a, 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 a $150 million furnace in Selu. I've put 400 million in furnaces, I mean, in coke batteries in Wange, and I'm building, I put 600 million, 800 million in a steel plant in Manize. I am going to create all this output, which would command that, will consume that electricity. And then you still want me to bring a balance, a, 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 my balance sheet from Shanghai. I mean, $60 billion company. Then our banks can't buy it. Two days ago, Ned Ben comes from South Africa, says, oh, is this what happens in this country? Here's the man. You understand? Now you see why we never have solution. You see, you, now, now, now you can, can, can you see? Can, now you know why South Africa is reluctant. Do you hear that? The banks in Zimbabwe failed to provide funds for a certain businessman wanted to build a steel plant. But... NetBank from South Africa came in and said, oh, we can fund that. He's talking to, Nezwa Chanakira is a banker. He had a successful bank, Kingdom Bank, which he had to sell because the economy wasn't supporting his growth. We are sitting with Trevor. Trevor is also a businessman. We have Tendabiti. He's an economist. He's an attorney as well. But um, he has yes, the nerve, listen to this, the nerve to tell them that no, we accommodate foreigners because they bring the money. And you, you are fighting to fit in. You are fighting to be included in those deals. But the foreigners come in with all that they, we need. Ha! Telling your own children, the same Zimbabweans, those kind of statements, and the goal of a government is to promote and equip, encourage, and believe in their own people. I can only imagine. You know, as, as South Africa has got their own issues. But South Africa, on their own, have got very successful business people across the board. I can only imagine if Ramaphosa would open his mouth. Yes, there are countries that come through, including that man, that rich man from Dubai, that once came with almost 300, I think, was it about 
500 people, I think it was, it went like wildfire. Private jet that landed in Cape Town. He, he, because he, he has got a, a house at a resort, a golf course, a, a beautiful luxury house. He's a very rich man from Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi Dubai, if I'm not mistaken. He came there and it was an issue. He flew in with his private jet with his family members. No document, nobody checked them in. They just went and they landed at his house. And they were having a party there. But I can, guys, I can only imagine you as a businessman being told such kind of words. And the last time I checked, they should be encouraging, affirming, believing in the young. We said, no, you guys can do it. We believe in you. How can we make you, how can we include you so you can also be successful, so you can build our economy? Does that mean that when I jing jing, when you that you are busy talking about, are going to be the only people who can do business in Zimbabwe? So all the Zimbabwe's don't matter. Except the foreigners, the one that matter because you are having deals. So NetBank came in and injected the money. NetBank in South Africa, and to the benefits of who? Who benefited from that deal? Definitely someone benefited from the deal. So collapse. If they did not collapse today, we don't going to find this stuff. Can you see your failure? And you always have to cover up and try to be bully and disrespectful. Can you hear what he's saying? Very disrespectful. Those statements. And this man. Like Mochangwa, guys, put it on record because we need to make sure we remind this man in the right time and forum because we shall do so. This man is definitely disrespectful. He has no regard of people's pain. I can't believe he just did say that. You are seeing opportunities in your country, but because you are being told it's a toxic environment, you can't open your eyes to this business. We need to build a dam at Munyati River to supply the steel plant. We may end up having somebody from outside the region come and build that plant because you are seeing toxicity in, your, in, in opportunities which are stuck. If a, a man who is investing 2 to $30 billion in dollars in your country doesn't see toxicity, why do you always want to see toxicity yourself in your own country? I, get, I cite another example. I'm just, Varun, they spent here years trying to get into Zimbabwean market. They couldn't. Then if eventually President Mnangagwa comes in, Varun is given opportunities. Within 24 months, they've built eight production lines. A traditional bottling company which was in this country, which used to sell Coca-Cola can for $1.80, now has to face somebody who supplies cans at 30 cents, 38 cents per company. Do you know what the Varun man from India says? He says, if the money which is available, disposable income in Zimbabwe, was the, this per capita was the same in India, I would be building eight plants every month in India. He is seeing an opportunity. He is who are seeing toxicity. Now, you see, these are the issues which I'm, I, I, when I make these, make these investments, I did not make them as a minister. How many times have I been there? How many times? I went to a minister from Gabi in his cabinet. I didn't last a year. I've, I've just been back now with two weeks as a minister. Don't try to see me as somebody who is in government bring in, as a minister bring investments. No, I think and act as a businessman. I am from the money school in New York. I'm a banker by training from school. <laughs> I lived in Brussels, which is the biggest trading center for goods in the world. That's why I started my diplomatic life. I am the founder of the digital economy in Zimbabwe and Telecom. That's my other degree. What I'm talking about is I've seen goods and services being traded on the global scale from Brussels. I've seen money from New York being used, being, being, being made to drive the world market. I went to China where I saw a medieval country being transformed by foreign direct investment in the shortest period of time. I saw miracles in China. They are more than us. We are less. We have more resources. We can do it. The main thing is if you dwell on toxicity in our minds, and then you are a businessman, you are too toxic, you sit on your haunches and then do, do, do no, nothing. Don't listen to this message about toxicity. See opportunities and we move forward as a country. I thank you. What did I say? What did I say to you? I told you that there won't be any conversation with Chris. There will never be a conversation with Chris. I guess Chris is being used by Zanpiv to make sure that he just hurt people. This man, they use him to hurt people. Because when he speaks, 
He does not have no regard for people's pain. He does not care. Did you hear him speaking? He's even telling us that we are saying the country is toxic. <laughs> the country is not, it's not even toxic. As we are, it's just my to feel a toxicity. But my foreigners, the country is moving. It's just a chat to sing what complain about the toxic. Because Zimbabwe is so toxic. Is Zimbabwe not toxic? Honestly. Is it not toxic? I've given up. I really have given up. Like, like all I'm going, I'm going to say is that, um, you see, whether they like it or not, we are going somewhere. We are very close to the finishing line. They are trying so hard, but man, means Did you see a chair that is circulating online? That is, that's what thorns. <laughs> I think You see, All right. So moving right along, guys. I want to remind you. Don't forget. Don't forget the upcoming 26th of, um, no, sorry, 20, it's 21st of October, sorry, the shutdown at the border. And I also saw another, okay, no, no, sorry, I'm confusing two things here. 26th of October is a shutdown at the border, uh, which is uh, Bedbridge border. And also 21st of October, this one I definitely have to be there. That is in, uh, we're going to be marching in Union, in Pretoria, Union building. So definitely let's meet in Pretoria. Um, surely I need, they need to go in and, um, hand in the letter. I'm sure it's regarding the solid, the issue of, um, a free, 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 no, sorry, fresh elections. So I'm just reminding you, don't forget that. Please make sure that you derealize it because we need to start taking action. And I'm a firm believer that talking is one thing, but taking an action is another because the moment we take action one step at a time, we must never take that for granted. Let's work together to build the Zimbabwe that we want. Very important. But you must not forget, guys, that you can hold your government accountable. Don't worry about the past. I know it's very important, but we must not forget that we can hold this government accountable. The constitution allows us to, to do so. That's I think that is cons um so this is the first time I who actually um you know tweeted and she said, Do you know that in terms of section twenty sixty seven, so subsection two D of the constitution, every citizen has a right to challenge government. You don't have to be an MP to hold a government official or administrative authority to account. You can absolutely be a citizen on Twitter and ask uh, the government of Zimbabwe tough questions about the legality of his bogus currencies or Take a minister to task over the incompetence that standard in constitutional democracy. So, like I was talking just now about Muchangwa, you can question them. Please make sure you make use of your understanding. Do as much research as possible and ask the right question. It's very important. So, that's on section two. It says, a sub subject to his constitution of every Zimbabwe citizen, he has the right to form, to join, and to participate in the activities of political party or organization of their choice. Point B, to campaign freely and peacefully for a political party or cause. C, to participate in peaceful pro uh, political um, activity. And D, to participate individually or collectively in gatherings or groups in any other manner in peaceful activities to influence, challenge, or support the policies of the government or any political or whatever cause. So please do not forget that you can question um, these government officials. Take them to task. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. They recently took oath to the office and you should be able to hold them accountable. Very important. And by the way, I want to say shout out to, um, someone was like, you need to talk about uh, this incredible lawyer that I respected so much, Beatrice Mutetwa. She had a one woman, you know, one woman um, pr protest, literally holding her card. It was written, Shabangu, Songezo, respect our vote. Songezo, did you hear that? And quite a number of people came out as well, t t just reminding Songezo, remember, some move, literally move kilometers uh, trying to go in to vote and here you are you're messing up with our vote so pretty much guys let's make sure we send we speak let our voice be heard notwithstanding the, the repartition that comes from zone pf we do not care the most important part is our voices must be heard that they need to respect our votes 
I know most of you, like me, people invested a lot and we can't afford, we cannot afford to be taken for granted. We should speak up so people can hear that we don't tolerate no nonsense. Sometimes it requires speaking boldly. You don't have to be rude, but you must speak boldly. Speak with understanding so people can hear who you are. So this is another thing. Zanpia being Zanpia for the user. Do you remember a guy called Japa Japa? You know Japa Japa, right? That old man who once been in Citizen Coalition for Change. And he began to bash Neil Sonchamisa that he is, he is uh, authoritarian. He is, is the triple C is a one man party. He is, he's a dictator. And boom, we saw him the following day. He was with Zanpia, but he knew he had a curse. Um, that he was busy fighting in the high court, and boom, he actually lost the case after the the uh, you know his um utterances you know of um you know inciting public vice so they they, they claim allegedly, I don't know he said but I think you know you know how it is when you speak and they can also you incite violence. I'm not the I'm not a judge. It's not my it's not my career. But knowing our political uh, climate, we know what happens, right? So he was jailed three years and one year suspended, so two years in prison. A very sad story indeed. But I remember this past election. No, not election. This past whatever thing that happened. You know, I saw, <laughs> I saw him. Actually, he was holding a microphone at the rally for Zanpia. And he was saying he's back. He's sitting for ED. And he was wearing a Zanpia t-shirt and the cap. And he was, oh, you know you know be praising the president and all but here he is now he's in prison he's in imprisonment i think he was trying to hide you know what i mean another tactics that are wrong hmm. that's one of the reasons why we are where we are today you need to be people of integrity and wisdom don't play games so japa japa starts saving his job time. this about two three days ago he's now saving two year uh, sentence one year suspended should he behave well so it's three years one year suspended very sad indeed, very sad indeed. By the way, they're going to be soon, 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 uh, you know, maybe um, make the that Zim Dwala, what do you call it, the RTGS, the sole currency. So look out for that. Mm -hmm. Look out for that. Remember I told you, my, di my, my, my dilemma, I told you, how we lost money with Trust Bank. So be careful. They are going to make the RTGS a sole currency, like they've always say. They are busy promoting the local currency. It also had um, the deputy, Mr. Deputy Munangago, court and court, Mr. Munangago's son, uh, claiming that if you do not want to use, if we hear you say you don't want to accept Zim dollar, mm -mm, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. So it shops you should accept Zim dollar. But um, most of government departments, people can pay in dollars, but they also want you to be paid in RTGS. But remember, you have the right to speak up, so you can also still question them. Please make sure you make your voice heard. Question. Now, this story, guys, this story, I'm sorry to say this. They want that people want Mars, Zimbabwe, to be cancelled just because they were not able to assist Gary on, on, on debt. I think they get it. said you can receive your 2.9 while I land in Harare. So, when, yeah, so Mars was not able to assist. And then this woman called Hillary. Hillary, you know Hillary, the one of the drama with Java? Stupid drama. Don't focus on that nonsense. She went in and she was attacking Mars that they must be cancelled because they were not able to help Gary. They could have helped Gary. You know, the Gary that had a family that was crying. We started with the story. And, um, you know, why would they be cancelled? Why can't we talk with the government to fix our hospitals like other countries? If you get hurt in Limpopo, all those hospitals are functioning. Pumalanga, hospitals are equipped. Whatever you are, we beat in the rural, hospitals are equipped. Why do we want to attack Mars? It's a private business. And I'm not saying they were right or wrong, but I'm saying it's a business. If we can ever hold anyone accountable, we should hold the Zimbabwe government of Zimbabwe accountable because they should make sure that all hospitals are equipped with the necessary, um, you know, drugs, equipments to cater for people, right? So why do we have to, to blame someone who's just trying to survive that they should take responsibility? No. No. It's a business. And I'm not saying they were right. You know, from a humanity point of view, if I was in their position, I could have helped. Because for me, it's always life first. But these people are business people. You know what I mean? I could have thought differently, but I can't, I cannot hold them accountable. But 
what I can say is from a humanity point of view, I could have dealt with it differently. You know, I was going to say, okay, life first, to help the person. We can talk about the money later on, let the person, life must be saved. I understand that point, but we can't cancel their business just because they don't have their heart that we expect them to have. But what we can do is to hold the government of Zimbabwe accountable for not equipping hospitals with drugs, ambulances. Don't forget they bought air ambulances. We thought in a situation like this, an air ambulance could have flew the guy to the right place for medical attention. But is there anyone who have a relative that ever benefited from these aircraft? Please help me. You remember the aircraft that the government bought where they're alleging that they spent 320 million US dollars. Is there anyone with a family member that has been airlifted to the hospital? Not are you only going to be airlifted to the hospital? You had the family claiming that there was not even no oxygen in Mashingo Hospital. No ambulance in Mashingo Hospital. No oxygen in Mashingo Hospital. Huh? So mass can't be cancelled. Let them do their business. Ma'am, Miss Hillary, next time you are very close to the ruling party. Talk to Java and your people to make sure that the hospital could be. We have seen you guys flashing money all over the place and do as you please. But you know hospitals are ill-equipped. Do the work. Speak to your people. You are influenced. Taurenema influencers in you. And make sure that the hospitals are really equipped. Now, said free mafugis they said dear miss Nangago, he's talking to the president like i said you guys have the right to question send the right questions respectfully you can also ask questions you can encourage you can um you can suggest you know so he said dear Nangago, can you kindly tell the nation why the country paid millions in United States dollars to procure helicopters which are not found anywhere near major cities where they are be where they are being deployed in case of emergency. What is it that happens in your heads as national leaders when you do things that benefit you as a group of elites and not the citizens? You need to tell everyone why those helicopters were bought because clearly they were not bought for the people of Zimbabwe. And by the way, while we are talking about the issue of the helicopters, while we are doing discuss the helicopters, Guys, one thing we can all agree right now, and God knows my heart, I lie not. People that are surrounding Edie are the most ruthless, wicked, and evil people. People that are surrounding Edie, the president of Zimbabwe. These helicopters were not bought because Mr. Mnangago woke up in the morning and said, let's buy helicopters. There are so many things that can be bought and be sold out in the country. They're only focusing on helicopters. Helicopters are luxury. I understand that they were saying that we are preparing for cyclones. Cyclones. I mean, that's, we, we know they may come, they may not. It's, you know, we are not sure. We're not God. But there are important issues like make sure drugs um in hospitals. Oxygen that wasn't is in the hospital. Those are the most important things that we need right now than spending all the money on uh, 320 million US dollars is a lot of money out. These are trillions and runs that we spend on helicopters that are just parked. I don't understand. I do, don't understand. I don't understand. But people are asking, Let's, well, why do you buy them? But that's what I'm saying. Transparency that was being spoken about by Trevor uh, Nigel transparency is one of the things that lacks in Zimbabwe. We're going to cover some of the stories of the things that they cover today, tomorrow morning. We're going to be running those stories. You're going to hear that it was, it was, it was a hot one, a hot one. But the Byzantium being Zimbabwe, they always run away from responsibility. They're not willing to talk about things that really matter. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, really. Unbelievable. Um, Guys, you must know. Let me just tell you, drop your location, please. Where are you actually watching from? I need to see your location because I'm gonna quickly uh, rush to Twitter right now. Someone sent me something here. Let's see what's going on. Just send, please drop your location, please. I need to send you some shout out. Today's Sunday. Happy Sunday, everybody. For those that join us a little bit later, happy Sunday. I want to tell you that I appreciate you deeply and I love you so much. You know, let's share some love, please. Love is important. <laughs> you know, let's share some love. Very important. Find one or two, three, four people you can send so say you love them. If we don't do that, we are failing. It takes practicality. Let's take action. 
you know, it's one thing to talk, it's another thing to take action. Very important. So Hopo, again, is trending on, on social media, but you know why he's trending? He seems to be, you know, he's talking about the issues that we were talking about in terms of the um, our hospitals that are dilapidating. But I would be happy to read this tweet because, you know, he is very much, um, you know, um, thorough when it comes to that issue. You know, he has been an advocate of, um, you know, hospital drugs. And also, the last time I checked, he mentioned that they had sourced almost 500 hospital beds from the United Kingdom. And they were supposed to come, but the Zimbabwean government said, nope, we are not a charity case. Hmm? So he said, um, shout out to you guys, shout out to you. He said, um, my, the sister of musician Gary Panzori. By the way, there are people who came late here, but I would really want you guys to take a listen for those that came late for that reason. I want to take a listen to what sister Gary said because some people didn't even hear or did not even hear about this war um, audio. I know it's a video, right? I want you guys to take a listen to what she said, please. But I have one message which would not be right if I won't say it today. The health system in Zimbabwe failed, Gary. And I, and I want to say it because maybe they may hear us. Maybe Gary would have been alive today. Maybe somebody's life, another child, some other family would have to go through the pain we are going. He held on, Gary held on for 12 hours. But there was nothing in my shoe. To me, it just means that if anyone has a serious accident in my shoe, it's a death trip. You are dead. You are good as dead. Gary, I don't know what to say. I never thought in my life, my whole life, that I would come here to bury Gary. Me? No, this is wrong. People say it is well, it is God's time, but I don't believe this was Gary's time. I don't believe so. If the government can hear us do something so that another family will not have to gather, okay? Just one scan could have saved Gary. Just for him to be looked at what was going on in his brain. Just an ambulance maybe could have taken him where he needed to go, I don't know. I asked the hospital machine when they said we have no oxygen in the ambulance. Maybe something I don't know, I don't know, but I know Gary held on for 12 hours and it's not fair. And let me just tell you, no one is safe really, no one is safe. I have people that I know that moved, traveled to zimbabwe just if you are in the diaspora you're like no i don't care i mean i'm i'm in america or i'm in australia or i'm in united kingdom or i'm in south africa we find here listen you can just travel home travel home to see your family member and you find yourself in a, in those kind of dilemma you know and then you get to the hospital where there's no medication no one is safe that includes foreigners as well remember those people that passed away recently that that actually had a plane crash no one is safe we should all rally together to make sure that the country functions for all of us i i, I hope we can understand that part that when we're saying let's have a better zimbabwe we are not saying this because it's for people in zimbabwe all of us we deserve or we desire to see that country functioning because we know it's so important for our relatives for everyone even us when we travel anything can happen you can break your leg who knows what let's work together let's amplify our voices let our voice be heard anything that you can do to make sure we speak so this government can hear us you can hear the sister for gary said she wanted the government of zimbabwe to take this matter serious they wouldn't want to hear that another family has to bury their children because they've passed away. And that, that's how I've realized that these people don't really care. Do you recall those boys? We went to sing at Zanu PF's rally. It was a group of boys. They were known for singing for Zanu PF. And they got involved in a car accident. Most of them passed away. Did you see? Was there anyone to assist them? 
Zimbabweans, we, we can't keep complaining. I think this year, let's make sure that we make up our mind before December. We need to start take action. It's one thing to talk, it's another thing to take action. We now start taking action. We need to make sure that we speak for things that matter. And we emphasize that there must be solutions to resolve those problems. That's just what I think, guys. That's all I have for you today, tonight. That's all I have for you. But I'm saying, let's all work together to make sure we have the Zimbabwe that we all want. Very, very important. We as Zimbabweans, let's work together to make sure we build the Zimbabwe that we all want. Correct. And I'm simple. I'm actually going right now. Serious. Hi there. Hi, N Nessa. Good to see you, Nessa. And the Simba. Shout out to you. TCWW. ZANPF does not care. Shout out to you, man. Shout out. Good to see you. And we have Phineas as well. Shout out, Phineas. Princess Enes Mutero. Shout out to you. A Peter Piri, Ellen Inyeka, shout out. <laughs> I love you guys. You're such amazing people. Thank you for engaging. It really means a lot, yeah. Jane, good to see you. Charles, man, Sarah, good to see you. Uh, we have Pierce Roy, good to see you. Shingrai, good to see you. Jane, okay, mention your name. Sarah as well. Elizabeth, good to see you, man. Tapiwa, shout out. Masioga, good to see you. Fortunate, good to see you. We have Gilbert Goy, shout out to you. Uh, Jay, shout out, Jay Gumbo, and there's also Jaden, shout out, good to see you, man, good to see you, and we have Dagi, shout out to you, B, 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 good, and the Rumi Zai, Rumi Zai, <laughs> good to see you, Rumi Zai, shout out to you, man, <laughs> people that are called Rumi Zai, they just, there's just something about them, they're very naughty, for some reason, they're not, so in my family, we have three Rumbi Zai, so it's me, Rumbi, and then my brother has got a wife called Rumbi, and then my, um, my, okay, so my son as well, my sister's, um, um, my sister's son, he has a wife called Rumbi, so there are three Rumbis in our family, this is just, just imagine the kind of drama that's going down here, <laughs> all right, so we have, and then uh, three KMC, then there's Miriam, shout out to you, man, Mitsuadi, good to see you, we have, um, Tembi, shout out, Good to see Trevor, Mom's ring. Shout out to you, Jay. Um, man, some people, we we did Jay Tao. Precious shout out to you, Charles as well. Good to see you, Mushumo. Shout out to see you, man. Good to see you guys. Uh, we have Steve. Shout out, Lawrence. Hey, what's up? Are you good? Memor, good to see you. Esnal, shout out to you. Betty, good to see you. Josephine, good to see you, man. Guys, I'm so glad that you guys came to just join with me. I'm super excited. And thank you guys really for just tuning in and make sure that you were also contributing. It means a lot. I'm so excited, guys, to spend time with you. And let's fix our country. Zimbabwe is for us all. Let's love each other. Let's spread love. Nothing else but love. All the time and pray that we find ways to bring peace and harmony. Shadrach, shout out to you, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> you are a bit late, but uh, I'm so glad that you came through. Guys, I'm so glad. Angela, shout out to you, man. Good to see you. <laughs> I'm so glad that you guys came through just hang out with me today. I'll see you tomorrow morning. I'm here. We're going to have a party till Jesus come down. <laughs> yeah. You guys must sleep tight. May God bless you. May God bless Zimbabwe. I love you so much. I love you. Sleep tight. And for those that are studying their day, God bless you. Have a great day. And share some love always. Bless you all.